Okay, so in this part, I want to show that when you take two convergence sequences and add them together, uh, then the result is another convergence sequence. So when I say add two convergence sequences together, I mean, you know, you take each pair of terms at this, you know, corresponding terms and you add them together. You'll see uh, when, when we actually state the property. But when you add two convergence sequences together, you get another convergence sequence whose limit is equal to the sum of the limits of the original two sequences, okay? So that's kind of the focus here. Um, so I'm just going to state the theorem. This is called theorem 9.3. Uh, if Sn converges to S and Tn converges to, oops, T, then Sn plus Tn Right, this is a new sequence and each term of this sequence you get by adding the corresponding terms of the original sequence, right? Then this converges to S plus T. Okay, so let's just think for a second about what we have to do to accomplish, to, to actually prove this, right? Remember, this is a situation where we have convergence given as a hypothesis, right? And then we want to pro prove, we're still also proving convergence of a third sequence, right? We have two sequences which converge, and we want to use those convergences to prove a third thing. So what we can actually do, right? Like ultimately what we want to do, okay, let me write it like this. So the goal is to, and I'll write it, I'll say it, I'll phrase it in this way, control uh, Sn plus Tn minus S plus T, they're absolute values, uh, by controlling uh, Sn minus T, oh, whoops, Sn minus S and Tn minus T. Okay, so these two quantities we have control over in the sense that because these original sequences converge, we can pick whatever numbers we want, epsilon one and epsilon two, and uh, we can force Sn minus S absolute value to be less than epsilon one by finding some, some N one, right? That's because it converges. And the same thing is true for Tn. We can find, uh, for any epsilon two, we could find like you know, so we can make, make Sn minus S to be less than epsilon one and Tn minus T to be less than epsilon two uh, for, you know, N greater than N one, let's say, and this is for N greater than N two, right? So then ask yourself basically, if we know these two things about Sn and Tn. If we know that Sn is within epsilon one of S and Tn is within epsilon two of T, what do we know about this, right? And basically the question is, you know, if you know there's a certain error between Sn and S and an error between Tn and T, what is the error between the sums, right? The sum of Sn and Tn and the sum of S and T. And it shouldn't be too hard to convince yourself in this case that the error here is basically bounded above by the sum of these two errors, right? So, uh, you know, intuitively, the errors add. So we expect um, Sn plus Tn minus S plus T to be less than epsilon one plus epsilon two, right? So all we have to do is, you know, if we're given an overall epsilon, right? We want this to be less than a given epsilon, this guy here. We want that to be less than a given epsilon, which we have no control over, right? And we're doing that by picking these other two epsilons and uh, using those to control this. Um, so all we would really have to do is make sure that the two epsilons we pick here add up to be less than the original epsilon that we were given, right? 
So that's uh, basically how the proof goes. Uh, and this justification, the justification for this actually just comes from the triangle inequality. So you'll see. Um, so proof. Uh, let epsilon be greater than zero. Okay. Then uh, take, um, you know, well, okay. I don't even have to use the notation of epsilon one and epsilon two. Right, to get epsilon one plus epsilon two to be less than or equal to epsilon, you can just make them both be epsilon over two. So then there exists an N one such that, right, I don't even really have to label epsilon one. Um, I can just say there exists an N one because SN converges, there exists an N one such that uh, SN minus S is less than epsilon over two for all N greater than N one, okay? And then uh, similarly, there exists an N2 such that um, Tn minus T is less than epsilon over two for all N greater than N2. Notice that they're different. We don't know if it's the same N1 and N2 because Tn and Sn are like totally different sequences. But um, we know that we can find these two numbers. Um, then we can just take so we want both of these things to be true at the same time, right? Like we wanna find some capital N so that for all the values of N beyond the capital N, both of these things are true. But we can just do that by making capital N be the maximum of these two N1 and N2, right? So take N equals the maximum of N1, N2, right? So then, for all n greater than n, we have, let's look at Sn plus Tn minus S plus T, right? Uh, by the triangle inequality, this is less than or equal to Sn. This is the triangle inequality. Uh, less than or equal to Sn minus S, oops plus Tn minus T. And then this is strictly less than epsilon over two plus epsilon over two. Uh, and that's because when N is greater than N, this is not a one, this is a comma, by the way. Um, when N is greater than our capital N, that means N is greater than both N1 and N2. So both of these things are true, right? That's what we wanted. So this is less than epsilon over two, and this is less than epsilon over two, and that's just epsilon. So uh, we're done, okay? So that's how you do the sums theorem. It's fairly straightforward. Products is more complicated, and I'll show you that one in the next video.